to me, Christianity gives me the reason for my existence. It gives meaning to life. The life I live here is a preparation for an eternity with God who created me. Christ promised eternity. And in Christianity, I have hope because I have Christ. Hope beyond the present existence. Paul Atauchu. His middle name is Ibita, meaning God's strength. Born and raised in Nigeria, Paul Atauchu came to the United States to find better opportunities for his family, leaving his wife Comfort and three children behind. At times when I'm driving, I'm praying. But that was my desire. I, my prayer was that there's nothing else I want God to do for me, but that my family should come, you know. So I'm always praying. To leave my country and come here is with one focus, that God will pave the way for me, for them to have a better chance in life than myself. They have no choice. We just work hard and pray hard. Work hard and pray hard. It was hard, but um, somehow we were able to go through and um, hope, you know, with hope. We had hope. The way life pans out at times is inexplicable. Where I was born, I, I never imagined going beyond my immediate environment. Going to school is, uh, opens channels uh, challenges. But after four years of separation, news that the Atauchi family would unite once again together in America brought happy but mixed emotions. Sad because at least the environment we know very well, the people, family members, church people, but there's still also this expectation from everybody around that you know, you are going to a better country, you are going to a better place, so there's joy, there's sorrow, there's care. They were also very happy because we were all coming to meet Daddy after, you know, four years. Everything was a lot different, and you know, you can, you can just feel the difference, and you can smell and taste it. The air is different, everything is different. It was a struggle initially when we got to this place, how to get them back into school, I applied for the three of them to get a scholarship to go to private schools in Washington, D.C. area. And uh, as God will have it, Jeremiah, he was the one that got the scholarship. I applied for the three of them, but he got it. So that's how he got to go to Archbishop Carroll. Archbishop Carroll High School was a life-changing experience for Jeremiah. With his introduction to football and head coach Rick Houchins, you know, here's a young Nigerian kid that overcame so much personal adversity. And to see him start at point A and then get all the way to Z, I've never known him to take anything for granted. So it's just not his nature. And I think that reverts back to it's a compliment to his culture, but I think it's also a compliment to his just his family values. You know, regardless to the hardships they experienced and whatever, they still had those family values they lived by. He told me, don't ever get satisfied with just being another guy or just wearing the uniform, just being another guy that got a full ride. You want to be the guy who's playing his, you know, his butt off and trying to be successful. You don't want to be another guy wearing the uniform, just happy to wear the uniform. You want to be successful on the field and off the field. And he kind of instilled that pride coming out of Archie Carroll. You know, to, to not only have pride wearing a uniform, but show pride when you play. How to be humble. I mean, he's a humble guy. You don't really know where he comes from until he actually tells you. I mean, he's been through a lot coming from Nigeria to here, and he's developed into a, a good person over here. And just hard work, places it'll take you. Yeah, it is a pretty crazy story. To, uh, just even having courage to come from there to over here or whatnot. And, um, it definitely says a lot about his character. You know, I've heard a man say once, you can measure how far a guy can go by how far he's come, and he's came a long way. 
based on the foundation my parents laid, my dad, uh, his work ethic to, you know, seek higher education, to move to America, to work hard, you know, to motivate his children, you know, and give us focus and drive and uh, foundation and church and Christianity and God, you know, and faith in God really is what, you know, has brought me to this point. Even though for pictures and photos, I mean, there's no way one can actually retain this, this memory. But then it brings back in a lot of the past and uh, what it was in those days. Yeah, com compared to life here, yeah, I mean, it's tough and it's hard, you know, in Nigeria. But the equation is, except you are transplanted from one environment to another, you cannot appreciate the difference. Uh, everything is normal. I mean, everybody is struggling. Everybody, you know, uh, go through the same motion in every day. So it becomes part of you. I mean, but when you step out, then you find out that, hey, especially coming to a country like this, that it is a lot harder in Nigeria to survive. Coming here, you know, with no family, really knowing nobody and having to acclimate himself to the society, trying to establish himself and then going back and starting a family in Nigeria. It definitely gives me, I mean, a lot more respect for, for him, you know, uh, and everything he does. So this is us one morning before school. I think I was still eating breakfast and then we took a picture with our neighbor's kids. This is me, Glory, Samuel, and then the, these are our neighbor's kids in front of our garage. This is me on signing day in 2010, just to see how far I've come and you know, uh, how things could have been so much different if I, if I didn't move here or how my life would be so, you know, a lot more different. It might have taken a different course if my dad didn't come to the United States to pursue education and you know, my life could be a, so much different if that didn't happen. When I drive around, you know, areas in D.C. and thinking about like where we lived before, like some of the places we've stayed, when I drive past those places, it just, you know, shows, you know, the journey of life and where you can come from and stuff. And D.C. to me is like a good representation of that because uh, we've lived in so many places. I mean, our family has, has had to make progress over the years. And we've lived in a lot of places that, you know, I didn't like living in bad neighborhoods where you can go outside, drug activity and things like that. But, you know, and then to move here to a, place, to a you know, better place, you know, just shows the progress of life and how you have to make progress in life. To me, that's what it represents. And everything I do kind of, you know, goes after that, how my parents made, made progress in their life and how I need to make progress in my life, you know, whether it be academically, whether it be football-wise, you know, every year, you know, I have to take another step forward. I can't plateau and, you know, be the same person and, you know, stay the same way. This is where he all started. Yeah, this is where I started, yeah. This is where I, you know, threw the pads. I didn't even know how to put the pads on. Somebody had to help me, like, right here or whatever. So this kind of, I always remember this one about, like, how I started playing football the first day. And down the hall when I was trying to get a physical and uh, I just ended up just signing up for football at the same time. When I wasn't even trying to sign up for football, I was trying to play soccer. So, yeah, that's kind of, you know, big to me. He's by far, in, in the almost 20 years I've been doing the ball games, he's as, he's as unique an individual story as, uh, as I've been blessed to cover. When you think about the combination of what he's doing athletically and what he's doing academically, um, it's fascinating. Anything you do in this life, you have to work hard. And he has set like an example, you know, his just, his determination to succeed and, and to just be the best all around person. Jeremiah Tatu is um, a commitment to excellence. Uh, he's a statue of liberty. He's a representative of the true meaning of a great American. We give you all the glory. Very thankful and um, also very blessed. At times I'm driving to work and suddenly it will occur to me and say, I will just scream and say, oh God, I thank you. Is this my life? You know, I remember before my family came, how you know, I was struggling and I hear 
Oh, oh God, I thank you. This country has done, it has done a lot. By and by, it has, um, you know, provided opportunities for us. I feel like my purpose in life is not really to accomplish my goals. It's to just honor them and show them that, you know what, what you did, the sacrifices you made was worth it, you know, for me to be, to be successful. I, I need to be successful to validate what you've done in your life, you know, to give your life meaning and reason that, you know, this is a purpose for you guys was for me to be successful, be, go to Georgia Tech and get my degree and play college football at a high level and things like that. So I look at that as more than just me as representing my dad, you know, giving him something to be excited about, you know, as he gets older and so he can look back and say, you know what, all that work I, I put in, you know, God had a plan, even moving from Nigeria here, everything was kind of served as a purpose. So to me personally, I see it as a fulfillment of their hard work and, you know, what I do is every, everything I do represents them and reflects what they've put into me and the time and money they've invested in me. Oh um, yeah, it's definitely contagious, you know. It's good to have guys like that on the team. You know, guys that um, had to go through something in their life um, because it seemed like they just played harder for some reason. You know, everybody try to play harder or whatever, but um, it seems as they have another purpose to play for. Having Jerry on our team, you know, um, is obviously a tremendous help to us as a family, you know, because as a football team, we're a family and we're just fortunate enough to have a great guy like that with us. and. Um, to, we, we just enjoy it and, and try to play hard for him, his family, try to play hard for each other and our family that we have. Amazing experience, you know, being able to have the opportunity to come play in a big city like this and Georgia Tech is just such a beautiful campus and just the excitement and the, that was flowing through my veins from the time I stepped on this campus. And you know, it's always been up from there. Football, I don't take it for granted. You know, a lot of guys have been playing since they were young, so they kind of experience the fun side of football. For me, when I experienced football, it was more of a work business kind of thing. You know, you're trying to accomplish this. And then the fun came. It wasn't fun first. I always feel like I'm still a student. You know, no matter how good I get, I always feel like, you know what, I'm still learning. I can still get better this way. And you know, since I just started playing, you know, the excitement is fresh. You'd like to have a team full of Jeremiah Tashis. I mean, he's no problem off the field. He does well in school. He's a, a, a tremendous performer on the field and, and a guy with a lot of ability. So I couldn't say enough good things about him. Barring injuries, I just think for one, I mean, he's got a tremendous future in front of him. You know, he has to take one credit and he graduates early in December. Um, he's in the driver's seat. I tell God, I'm like, you know what, if this is all you're going to do for me, if this is where it's going to end for me, if this is the last good thing that happens to me, you know, I'll be satisfied, I'll be grateful, I'll thank you for it, and I'll be happy. But, you know, I know that you know that I want to move forward with my career and, you know, go to and take it to the next level. And if this is all, you know, I'm satisfied, I'm happy. If there's more to the story, then, you know, I would continue to give you thanks and I'll be, be the happiest man alive. <laughs>